welcome to another episode of Healthy Nasty Kitchen TV. And today is a special episode because it's a masterclass, a free masterclass for you to learn how to bake sourdough with me in the comfort of my home and hopefully in the comfort of your home. And if you've been looking to learn sourdough for a very long time, I think this is the video for you because it's going to deliver a lot of information and a lot of knowledge that you're probably searching for. All the little tips and tricks that you might need to be able to bake your first loaf. Of course, we will need baking vessel, we need a bowl, we need flour, water, a healthy mother yeast or sourdough culture. And that's it. These are the tools that we need. And I uh, hope you can put your hands onto these tools before you start with the masterclass. If you don't have them, go and make sure that somebody can, you can borrow them from someone or you can find them somewhere for very cheap and put them in your home and start baking sourdough. But why this sourdough? Why this sourdough masterclass? This sourdough masterclass because I wanted to leave on the net, on the internet, a resource that will be able to help the next generation of bakers, the next five generation of bakers, the children of your children of your children of your children, who knows? And I want you to be able to show and direct them into, okay, this is the video that you can watch and you can learn all what you need for baking sour, for baking bread made with mother yeast. So the class is going to go very quickly, very simple. It's about 20 minutes long. You're going to learn how to mix the dough how to patiently rest it, how to pre-shape it, shape it, score it, bake it, and wait before you have a slice, because that's a one very important thing. Another thing that we're going to learn today, we're going to be learning how to be patient, how to be patient, how to be recognizing when the dough is actually proven, doubled, rested, utilized, all these things. So stay tuned, keep watching, because that's when it's going to start. So here we are, our short introduction. It's about time to start making our own sourdough. So we start by putting 225 grams of water. Be precise if you can. If you put 10 grams more, it won't change much, but it will change slightly the hydration of the dough at the end. But not much but trying to keep it 225 if you can and then i like to work on a 40 percent sourdough starter culture so we're gonna put 200 grams of flour of a sourdough starter which is made with 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water so you clean the bowl so you're sure that you put 200 grams and this one is being fed two hours before two hours ago now, I put the salt straight away. You don't have to wait. You can put it straight away because we're not gonna mix it into the yeast, but at least it dissolves. And this is the most basic way to make a sourdough bread. And then we put 400 grams of flour. Now that we have all the ingredients into the bowl, we can mix it either with a spatula or with a Danish spatula or even with a, the back of it. So, or you can also use your hand. So, because I'm doing a demo now for you to learn at home, I'm gonna use a rubber spatula so you can see. I remove the scale and now I start mixing. Just like this. Very simply, you see? It doesn't take that long. I'm trying to put the flour back in, in there. So, it doesn't have to take too long. Now make sure that the water and the flour mix together very well at the beginning, so you don't have any lumps. The dough doesn't have to be smooth, but the water needs to be absorbed by the flour. So you see I'm trying to move it around and to get the same dough to clean the bowl itself. Just like that. When the dough comes together, I clean the spatula. So at this point, I've cleaned my tools from the excess dough, and now I can slightly fold with my hands just to get everything into the dough and making sure by feeling with my fingers if there are any lumps. 
which is very important because you don't want to have any lump of flour into your dough and that's what you need to do at home you see it didn't take me long probably we've been spending five minutes really without cutting the video I'm just recording in small steps so you can actually practice this one at home and you can watch it many times it's very important that you have this resource so you can actually watch it as many times as you want so once it's like that all the flour has been absorbed I clean the side with the dough you see I try to get collect all the flour that's meant to be in the recipe so now this one has already started fermenting okay now we give it a rest I'll cover with my lid you can use clean wrap you can use a wet towel you can use anything this is what I do so by now you would have mixed the ingredients as I said flour water starter salt and they'll be in a bowl they will look rough so we need to forget about them and learn about gluten and water in this precise time so what what's happening now while you're watching the video is that the flour and water and the starter that you mix together are binding naturally together and this happens also because there is such a slow fermentation process happening into the dough that the bacteria enzymes are that little yet that they can't attack the flour straight away they can't attack the the protein straight away so at the let's say this one is gluten this one is water they are slowly binding and creating a new structure creating the membrane that will trap the gas during the fermentation they will trap the carbon dioxide during the proving period so this is what's actually happening right now they binding together slowly eating the sugars slowly eating the protein creating more of themselves multiplying and creating gas into the dough so this will happen in about four times but by right now we are utilizing the dough naturally automatically without doing anything so let's go back to the dough in about 50 minutes half an hour an hour it's up to you it doesn't change much and then we do the first stretch and fold which will help us which will help us to build more structure into the dough and to also recognize that the autolyzer has done his effect has done his job of binding these two molecules together here we are now remove the lid from our dough you can see it's it's a bit lumpy it's not smooth but it's very soft look how much I can pull it you see that's the gluten structure that is actually developing by itself and thanks to the slow fermentation the sourdough can give you you don't have actually to work it into a machine this is perfect for people that has issue with their hands this is perfect for people that can't use much strength in their arms so now but just repeat what I do and this is your basic thing I usually use some water to help myself at the beginning so I just wet my hand so it doesn't stick to my hands and then I lift it you see how much I lift it and then I fold it to the center and I do the same I lift it and I fold it to the center you just need to repeat what I do the more you do it the more familiar you become with the with the texture with the feeling and how the dough needs to look like when you actually finish the, the kneading so keep going until the dough oppose more resistance to your actions this is where I repeat to my students every time you see now I can't pull it anymore it's creating some resistance so this is how you need to understand when the dough it's nervous you don't want the dough to be too nervous okay so keep it up there how you go now, now I struggle to pull it up but the dough is moving out and that's perfect that's what you want here we go, here we go, here we go. And it's like that, wet my hand just to help myself, lift it upside down, give it a round shape and it looks beautiful, you see? Now we give it an hour of rest, which is gonna be our first bulk proving fermentation. At this point, the dough has rested for an hour and it, it, we need to make sure that we wet our ends so we can fold it again 
some of the structure that we built in this resting time. So proceed as before from the outside to the end to the center. As you can see in the video now, keep doing that until the dough becomes tough again and oppose resistance to your actions. You see like mine has become a bit tougher now, it's very hard to move it. Flip it upside down, cover it again and give it four hours of proving. Hey guys, I know it's light and there are some shades because there's no sunlight onto this dough, but just wanted to show you what it looks like after four hours of proving. So we have actually done the last folding four hours ago and this is ready either to go in the fridge right now in the container like it is to do a bulk fermentation or we can actually shape it, put, put it into a proving basket, bun it on and then do the bulk proving, bulk proving fermentation into the proving basket. So I'm gonna show you this step now. We are in the pre-shaping time now where we sh we will pre-shape the dough onto a bench slightly dusted with flour and secondly, subsequently we will fold it following my method and leave it on the bench that's one of the tricks that's one of the tips that I teach everybody because many people complain that the bread actually sticks to the proving basket why does it stick to the proving basket? It sticks to the proving basket because we have broken the membrane maybe to, while tensing the bread too much and now it needs to create it as well. It needs to create that skin, that protection around it. So that skin needs to slightly dry to be able to be anti adherent So it needs to be non-sticky surface. And then we dust it with some flour, put it into the banneton and ready to rest for up to two days in your fridge. That will help your dough to settle, that will help, that will help the membranes that now we have attached together with the folding to, to become one another again, a unison of bundle of dough. And after that, you know what's happening, you know what's coming. We will be baking it tomorrow morning. Fold this one on top, roll it like that. See, very easy. It is very easy indeed. So, here we go. And if you want to do around, I'll show you again. Okay, put this one there. You go there, you lift this one and you put it to the center. And then you see this little lip that's been formed, you put it on top. And then on top again. And this one on top again. And you keep going until you form a flower and there are no lips anymore, like that now. Then we flip it around and tuck it in. Tuck it in like that. With your hands, you push in. You push and turn. Push and turn. Push and turn. Push and turn. You can also use this one if you want. The scraper. The bench scraper. Just pull it. And just pull it towards you. And you pull it towards you. Just like that. Pull it towards you. Yeah. Now we give it five minutes rest and then we put it into the proving basket. So here we go. Now we dust the proving basket generously with some rice flour. We dust the loaf as well. And then we put it in. You see, it's not filling the container. So I'm gonna put this one in, I'm gonna leave this one out for an hour. And then in an hour, I'm gonna put it in the fridge. You don't need to see that, but this is what you need to do. Leave it out for an hour, and then we put it into the fridge, okay? And we can do the same with the round one. Here we go, a round proving basket. Make sure that it's nice and dusted. The same with this one. You see, it's been sealed on the bottom, and then we slightly put it there. Look, here we go. And make sure that you remember, you don't need to cover this one because you actually want your dough some skin around it. So when you score it, you can actually see the pattern that you're designing on it. And also it will make a nice crispier crust on the outside. So remember, wait an hour and put this one in the fridge. And then tomorrow morning we will bake it together.
Here we are, we almost at the end of our baking course, which is the baking, the actual baking of the bread. So the bread is proven and you followed every step that I've given you so far and you probably are in the right spot with a nice bubbly sourdough like this one, nice and fluffy. You can see there are bubbles around here. Look at that beautiful, nice and fluffy, 75% hydrated, rested in the fridge and now we are about to tip it on some baking paper and then we will be able to score it and bake it so these are a few tools that we need to make the baking paper layer that we need so we rip it and then we're trying to take a measure how the simple way to do it is to fold this one in a half you see then fold it in a half again so we can find the center. Once we found the center, this will be our guideline for the triangles that we need to fold, like that. Just like this, you can see. So I'll show you why I tipped the pot upside down because we will need to get to the center of the pot to measure exactly how much baking paper we need. So once you I've done this, which is something I learned when I was very young, 15 years old, to line the baking trays to make sponges. This is what we do. We go to the center, roughly, and then we go to the end, one centimeter above the edge, just down there, and then we take the measure of that. We fold it so we can see where that is, and then with a pair of scissors, we just cut it up. Now, this one can be used for anything else, but we can put it away for now. Yeah, this is how pa paper, you see, perfect, perfect round, it goes inside, it slightly folds onto the side of the pot as well, so the bread won't stick. So now we put this one on the side, we're ready for that, and we can tip our bread on top. So now we're ready to tip it, we can put this one on top here, flip it over, as you can see, the bread is ready. I slightly tuck it in because it's gonna relax again. And then with the eight of this coring blade that you can find anywhere, you can find it onto my website, nastykitchen.com, but you can also find it on eBay, Amazon, and any other probably baking shop. So you can check the link that I've sent you on the PDF as well. So now I'm gonna score it into a square so you go nice and deep, like that, very straight. Don't be afraid of going too deep. It's very important that you give enough room to the bread. So the bread is scored, and we can now put it into our pot, Dutch oven, crock pot, whatever you like. You can also use a normal steel pot. So this is how I started at the beginning. And that's how we go. We put this in there. Just like that, put the lid on and put it in the oven. And we'll see you in 50 minutes, an hour. Here we are now. That's one of the most important part of the baking. So our bread has been baking for about 40, 50 minutes. And now we need to check how it looks inside. So there will be some steam coming out. Make sure you hold a towel or something not to burn yourself. And you see, that's huge compared to the one before. You remember the one before? So now this one is grown, it's cooked, it's perfectly baked, and we put it back in. Put it back in and we close it. And we leave it there for another about 20 minutes. Here we are. The beauty is here. Here we go. This wonderful sourdough. We do the tapping sequence. Sounds pretty hollow, which is what you're looking for. The crust is open very well. It's wonderful. And this is what comes out. You see? This is the beauty of sourdough. So there's no additional yeast in this one. There's only pure natural yeast. Remember to, once you bake it, to put it on a rack if you have, so it can dry out. You can hear, this is wonderful. This is still burning hot. It's 
So make a rest and then enjoy it. I really hope that you can achieve with a bit of practice, actually a lot of practice, something like that, because you deserve it. And I'm sure that if you keep working often and with faith, you're gonna do it. You're gonna achieve the same sabato that you can see here, 100%. Follow my steps, follow my advice, listen to what I say, look what I do, and trying to repeat it as often as you can. Thank you for enjoying this masterclass with me, and I hope to see you soon. So we are at the end of the masterclass. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned a lot, and uh, I really hope that you find the time to write a comment or to follow this page or to subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow me on all my other social media because I'm going to deliver as much value as I can it not only related to sourdough for the rest of my life. That's one of my, one of my goals. So stay tuned, subscribe, like, and I'll see you later. Ciao.